I'm Hazel, it's Saturday again, which makes it time to sit down and catch up on the WOW news of the week, what I've been up to, and answer some of your questions. This week in WOW, the big news was the end of multiboxing. Kind of. Blizzard released a statement this week indicating that their rules around input broadcast software are changing and that kind of software will no longer be permitted. Those are the kind of tools that let multiboxers clone their key inputs to multiple characters at once. So if you've ever been out in the world and you saw an army of mostly boomkins, honestly, uh, collecting herbs or parked up in a place farming like really rapidly spawning mobs, that's generally speaking how that was done was with input broadcast software. As of this week, they are now issuing warnings that are going to be escalated to account actions if use of this kind of software continues. It's important to note that multiboxing itself, which is the simultaneous running of multiple WoW clients and accounts, that's not banned. You can still play multiple WoW accounts at once, it just means that you're going to need to manually input actions for each character. So there's nothing stopping you from having multibox characters following around your main while you're doing world quests on follow. It just means that if you want them all to attack, you're going to need to alt tab over to each one to attack. And same thing for picking a node you'll need to tab to each account to manually gather the node in each client. This change is almost certainly going to have an impact on material prices, which are very likely to go up, and potentially token prices, which might come down. Throughout BFA, multiboxers have been able to very effectively uh, farm and generate massive amounts of mats, including herbs and cloth. So the prices got driven down because of so much supply. So in the future, you're going to be able to get more gold for the cloth and herbs and meat that you pick up just out there living your life because there won't be armies of multibox characters generating these things in unfair quantities. Um, it does mean that your raid mats and your raid consumable prices are most likely going to go up, but any incidental gathering that you might do should also make more gold, which should offset that somewhat. Also, don't forget that with the potion changes that we have in Shadowlands, you're going to be going through probably less potions overall in the first place due to no longer having a need to prepot. I am generally pretty happy with this change. Multiboxing, and especially multiboxing at the scale that it's being targeted right now, is one of those things that's always been allowed in WoW, but it's become increasingly unclear why it's allowed. And just because they may have made a decision on it back when the game was new doesn't mean that decision needs to stand for the end of time, especially because the game has changed around it. Like, I don't know if it was ever like a distinct call that was made that botting was bad, but multiboxing didn't count, or if it was just something that kind of just was assumed and eventually got grandfathered in. But either way, whenever that decision happened, it was in a time before dynamic spawn rates were creating hyperspawn farming points, it was a time that herb nodes would be gathered once and then despawn, and it was a time before the WoW token, which meant that people that wanted to maintain multiple active WoW accounts had to pay for all of those subs with money, and that did mean that fewer people were doing it, whereas nowadays multiboxers are able to generate such incredible amounts of gold they can just pay for the subs for all of those accounts, plus like more copies of the game, purely via the WoW token, so it's just not the same world world that that decision was originally made in. I can understand why a multiboxer might feel really frustrated by these changes. I felt a little bit the same way when they made the auction house changes to prevent the massive uh, cancel and repo scanning that we did with TSM. That was something that I used to do, but I think in both cases I can recognize that this is going to be better for the overall health of the game. Also in WoW this week, the 16th anniversary event started, and it is a replay of some things we saw last year that we were not necessarily expecting to come back. So you have the 16% experience and rep bonus, you have the old world bosses back again and dropping gear of their own, and they brought Korok's Revenge back for another year, so if you did not get your Stormpike Battle Ram and Frostwolf Snarler, Last year, if you missed last year's anniversary event, you may not be able to get your own Deathwing mount, but you can do Korok's Revenge to earn these anniversary mounts. So if you don't have those yet, get in there, do the quest in there to get Time Warp badges, and eventually you'll fill up that bar and get your special reward. And you only need to do this on one faction. Doing it on one faction will reward the mount on the other one. The experience gain from Korok's Revenge is certainly not what it used to be. That has been nerfed to the point of being negligible. So not really a good place to level alts, but that doesn't surprise me at all. Leveling alts is so much faster now than it was last year when we had last Korax Revenge that it's no longer really needed as a catch-up mechanic. Like this week with the Darkmoon Fair buff and the Anniversary Experience buff, uh, speedrunner Des Mephisto got a 3 hour and 33 minute leveling time going from 10 to 50. So I don't, I don't know if we really need Korax Revenge. Obviously not everybody's going to be able to get speedrunner times, but it's still drastically faster overall than it was last year. There is one new thing from the anniversary event this year. There is the Crafted Cloak of War transmog that you can buy for 200 Time Warp badges. That is available from a vendor in the Caverns of Time found here if you haven't gone and gotten it yet. You only need to buy it once. The appearance is account-wide. It's a blue cloak with some detail on it. I quite like it. Um, I know there's some people saying it's underwhelming and it's not like neon or flashing lasers, but I think it's, I think it's subtle. 
Uh, also, I don't transmog cloaks, so I don't I don't know why I need an opinion. <laughs> Every character that you have that opens the anniversary mail will get 200 time warp badges in that package. So just open it on one of them, go buy the cloak, and then open it on the rest of them to have more time warp badges for the next time that you need like some rep or a time walking mount or something. Other things, if you check out the calendar, you might notice that Shadowlands is only two and a little bit weeks away now. It is so soon, and the pre-patch event is starting even sooner this upcoming Tuesday on November 10th. There will be catch-up gear available from that, so you can get any characters that are not raid geared up to a higher item level before Shadowlands launches. I think my plan is to try the event, and if I'm enjoying it and it's like a really efficient way to get catch-up gear for my alts, I will get it for at least a couple characters. But if it's grindy or awkward, then I'm just not really going to worry about it. It's only two weeks of event anyways. Um, the catch-up gear is a pretty big item level jump over what like a fresh level 50 would be wearing, but you're still going to replace it while you're leveling 50 to 60 in Shadowlands, so it's not like a big long-term deal if you don't get it for all of your characters. So I'm gonna check it out, but overall I'm not too worried about it. And in my life this week, it's been a lot of tea and editing and trying and failing to avoid constantly refreshing the news that shall not be named because it's so stressful but also impossible to look away from. I've gotten myself a teeny little bit of a cold so I'm doing my best to just spend time with my favorite sweaters and get enough sleep because I do not have time to get full-blown sick right now. Uh, questions from this week. Oh, Monkey asks, uh, I have a mage I just leveled to 50. Should I do the corruption quest or just jump into Shadowlands when it comes? I would not bother with 8.3 content at this point in the game unless there are cosmetics that you need from it. Um, you know, like mounts and pets and toys and transmog that you're interested in. But even if you want those things, you can go back and get them later. Um, I would just chill on your mage. I would do some of the pre-patch event when that starts this week. And then otherwise, you're pretty safe to just wait for Shadowlands. We're going to get all new stuff when we're leveling up to 60. And Hikari Senpai asks, how did you set up the countdown on Windows 10? I set a reminder in my calendar on my phone. Uh, it's a cute idea. I would love to replicate it for my desktop on Windows 10. So I have a free app from the Microsoft Store. It's called Special Day. And I downloaded this three years ago while the Windows phone was still a thing. I think it was originally developed for that. I downloaded it originally to count down to like my first BlizzCon. It's still around and you can still get it and it's still free and it does work. It's a little wonky and the interface isn't super intuitive and sometimes it won't update the day until I click into the widget and I really don't know what this apostrophe is all about, but it does still work, which is impressive for something that has a developer who has not tweeted um, about it or anything else since 2017. And before I do the outro, I want to say that while we can stock up on Shadowlands consumables until we can get into Shadowlands and start getting those Shadowlands mats, we can stock up on IRL consumables for Shadowlands. And one of those things for me is making sure I'm stocked up on coffee. The Adventurers Coffee Co. offers a variety of different delicious options, my current favorite being the Ragnar Roast. You can save 10% off with the code HAZELNUTTY that supports me and supports a small business and supports you and your caffeination, if that's something that you do, while you game. Win, win, win. And it's yummy. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions that you would like me to answer in a news video, please leave it in the comments of the most recent one and include the word question. Stop by a stream sometime if you like. I do those over on Twitch six days a week and have a wonderful, wonderful day.